All right, good day, guys. Good day to you all. Welcome back to the Formula Sports Channel. We're talking the Jamaica reggae girls in this particular video and their impressive, mightily impressive Nilal draw versus France in their opening game of the FIFA Women's World Cup, seeing a big, big, big result for the reggae girls. Early this morning, the match started at 5 a.m. live. Seeing, I mean, words cannot be, be found to really and truly describe how mammoth of a result this is. France is the number fifth ranked team in the world. The Jamaica Reggae Girls are the number 43rd ranked team in the world. Even though I think our team on paper is a little bit better than what our world ranking suggests but still man you know the french are still a, a mighty mighty force within women's football within football on a hold and to get a nil out draw in the group stages of a world cup the regular second ever world cup second consecutive world cup you know words cannot surmise really how big of a result it was many people thought the reggae girls would get thrashed. Honestly, many people, including myself, people, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was not very optimistic coming into this game. Seeing I thought the reggae girls were gonna get a uh, whopping, right? Many people know I am a huge fan of the reggae girls and the players that we have. But, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of our coach, Lauren Donaldson. Seeing, um, I'm going to give you guys the starting lineup for the Reggae Girls. For the most part in this game, the Reggae Girls played in a 4-4-2. The back line was Tierney Wilshire. Um, the Swaby sisters were occupying the centre-back positions, Alison and Chantel, respectively. Blackwood, then, then, Denisha Blackwood was the left fullback the midfield was um Chenya Matthews Drew Spence Samson Vian Samson and Jody Brown and up top was uh, Primus and Khadija Bonny Shaw Atlanta Primus and Bonny Shaw that was the starting lineup let me give you guys the stats quickly as well so overall Shots for France, 14 compared to the regular girls, 6. Shots on target, 5 for France, 2 for the Jamaica regular girls. Possession, 73% possession to France, 27% possession to the regular girls. That's a department we need to improve upon. 472 passes for France, 193 passes for Jamaica, 79% passing accuracy for France, 51% passing accuracy for the regular girls. Big result, but that stat certainly needs to improve. 51% passing accuracy is dreadful. Really, really bad. 15 fouls for France, 10 for the regular girls. One yellow card apiece, that big red card for the regular girls. One, reg one red card for the regular girls, known for France. That's going to be a huge miss in such a game. Bonishaw out. Um, four offsides for France. No offsides for the regular girls. And uh, 12 corners for the French team. Two corners for Jamaica regular girls. Let's start off with what the girls did right. Right, the girls, the girls got some things wrong in this game, I believe. But, you know, they got a lot of things right as well. Let's start off with what they got right ladies and gentlemen they were stubborn in defense stubborn 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 in defense they defended excellently against this powerhouse french team very organized very compact limiting the spaces between the lines and the positions on the pitch right brilliant they defended as a unit ladies and gentlemen didn't give the french a lot of time and space on the ball to settle into a rhythm and to play 
right? Brilliant, brilliant. Even when they applied the front press against the French on occasions and, you know, some plays they applied the front press and, you know, the French had a problem or two building out against that front line pressure from the Jamaica reggae girls. So the reggae girls really committed themselves in this one and, you know, got dogged and got stuck in in their approach and really disrupted the rhythm and the flow of the French team. One of the things they did brilliantly was they kept the game at a certain pace, you know. Um, the, the game was constantly being broken up, so to speak, you know. A lot of pauses in this particular game, a lot of fouls, you know, the game was really a physical encounter and, you know, the reggae girls ensured that it became a physical encounter. And the French were up to it as well. But the constant stoppages in play, you know, broke up the rhythm of the French and broke up the pace of the game and, you know, prevented the game from, you know, being played at an extremely quick pace, being played at a pace we know the French can, you know, play at seeing if the French were allowed to get into that rhythm and to play at that particular pace, then it would have been really, really difficult for the reggae girls. So, you know, from that standpoint, I think the reggae girls did brilliantly and grinded out this result against the French. There were some very good individual performances as well. I think then, then, uh, you know, left back, if I'm not mistaken, she got um, player of the match, the player of the match award. You know, she was brilliant in the game relative to the amount of pressure that she would have come up against. You know, a lot of the French attacks were going down their right or left, you know, and I think, you know, with the amount of pressure that then, then was under, on that left-hand side, she really held her own for the most part, one of the things I think the girls did well at as well was dealing with the French switching the points of attack, right? And and even, you know, then then as well, you know, played a big role in that. Our fullbacks and the team on, on a whole played a big role in the switching of the points of attack, right? That You know, the French playing it down one side, that big switch to the other side, you know, trying to shift our team you know create space and trying to you know disorganize us and and shift the team and you know we're really held up with that very well um another reggae girl i think really shone was khadija bonisha i mean what can we say about khadija bonisha khadija bonisha is world class fox one of the best players in women's football just a huge huge player man i mean the holding up of the play right you know, I mean, she was our main point of attack, held up the play, got the fouls, did brilliantly with her back to goal, as we know she can. Brilliant stuff from Khadija Bonisha. I mean, so there are so many things that can be said about her performance. I thought the players in the middle of the park as well, you know, did well, especially in the, on the defensive side of things, you know, the likes of um, Vian Sampson, and especially Drew Spence, I think those ladies did very well. Also, the goalkeeper, Becky Spencer, did well, especially her distribution. I mean, should, should we even call out players, though? I mean, I'm trying to pick out the ones that stood out for me personally, but really and truly, the whole team put in a very good shift. Seeing um, the negatives... The negatives, the negatives, the negatives. From a standpoint of building out from the back, that's still a problem for the reggae girls. And that's one of the biggest knocks I have against Lauren Donaldson, right? 27% possession, not nearly enough. You know, we have to keep possession of the football if we want to get something out of these games. You know, it can't be just wave after wave after wave. We have to be able to put the ball on the ground. You know, the pass puts some passes out together in the respective phases of build-up, you know, and 
build through the respective thirds. It can't just be long ball to bunny shot all the time. Can't just be long ball to bunny shot all the time. Right? I mean, that's literally our only point of attack. And and that's a that's a huge criticism I have of the of the performance because there was too much placed on Bonisha, ladies and gentlemen. Bonisha was just doing way too much. And there was very little support for Bonisha on a number of occasions. It almost feels as if Bonisha is 70% of the regular girls build up play. Right? Without Bonnie, what would Lauren Donaldson do? Without a player who can play back to goal as good as great as bonnie shaw we are just overworking bonnie shaw overworking her it's just too much on her and again what makes it even worse is that when she gets the ball right she wins the first ball you know who are we playing off the second balls there's no support for bonnie shaw a lot of the time she's isolated against three four two three four french players that can't work, ladies and gentlemen. That absolutely cannot work. Another criticism I have of the regular girls' performance was corner kicks. I thought that the regular girls could have done better against the French corners, right? Far too much pressure from the French came as a result of them, you know, winning the second and third phases of the corner kicks, right? Us not clearing our lines properly us not you know winning even if we win the first ball you know not winning the second ball even if we do win the second ball we are not you know building out we're not countering effectively right well we're, we're losing the ball and uh, you know the french come at us again unacceptable that 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 definitely needs to improve um the French team had a huge threat in corner kicks, Renard. You know, I think in the first half, we didn't deal with that well enough. Most importantly, because of who we had marking her on the corner kicks, you know, um, Primus was not the best person to deal with that. Credit to Lauren Donaldson. He changed that in the second half. Um, another one of the criticisms that I have of the build-up play, especially, is that the girls are playing in isolation in build up and you know we spoke specifically about bonnie Shaw, but overall the entire team will play well as a unit in the defensive moments of the game but offensively you know the team you know you see little and to be fair we saw glimpses of it you know in this game more than what i thought we would have seen in the game you know when you look at some of the games leading up to the world cup for the regular girls that has been a huge problem playing in isolation there were times when the girls connect had some connectivity you know strung some passes together and the players were relatively close on the pitch but you know for the most part you know that wasn't consistent enough you know for the most part you know the players in the attacking moments of the game was far too were far too isolated seeing so that's basically the criticisms that I have of the performance. Yes, it's great. It was a great performance. But to be fair, there are things that the girls need to improve on. You know, um, I thought the regular girls were as good as they could possibly be on the day. I don't think France was as good as they could possibly be on the day. So we have to take that into consideration as well. I didn't, the, the, the substitutions that Donaldson made, um, I didn't have an issue with the players that he took off. But the, you know, Primus and, and Matthews, I thought, were, you know, had run their legs, so to speak, and had run their course. And, you know, I didn't have an issue with those two coming off in, in particular. You know, they were beginning to get a little bit sloppy. But... Um, was Havana Salone the best option to come on in the middle of the park? You know, at that point in time, you know, I think the, the French were, were, were having some patterns of play in our central zone. And I think one of the reasons was Havana Salone 
you know, I don't think Saloon is the best from a defensive standpoint. And at that point in time, the 71st minute, you would think that Donaldson would be wanting to hold on for dear life and, you know, try and defend. So for me, you know, I, I wasn't too pleased with that particular substitution. But all in all, you know, far more, a, a far, a, 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 as good as a performance and a result as the reggae girls could have possibly hoped for. As good a result and performance as the reggae girls could have possibly hoped for. Up next is Panama and Saturday. We wish the reggae girls all the best for that particular encounter. You know, a game that the reggae girls can get a big result against. And this result sets us up now for a possible second round berth. You know, if we beat Panama, there is a huge chance we could qualify to the next round and that would be big. However, Beating Panama is going to be easier said than done, especially without Bonnie Shaw. I don't know if it was just tired. Bonnie Shaw got tired in the latter stages, but that was a careless tackle from our captain who should have done better, knowing how important she is to the team and knowing that she was already on a yellow card. But all in all, we wish the reggae girls all the best for that game. And Saturday, you know, we're wishing the reggae girls all the best, man. Best of luck versus panama with that being said knock up the like button subscribe and share the reggae girls have a chance of getting out of a very difficult group many would not have backed them to emerge from take care guys stay safe and until next time